Hi, your next challenge is entitled, is the word singular or plural? They ask you to create a function that takes in a word and determines whether or not it is plural. And for simplicity's sake, they are saying a plural word is one that ends in S. Now you can probably readily think of exceptions to this rule, but they're trying to keep things really simple and that's what we're going with. So let's just press your I believe button and pretend that the English language works that way. We'll show some examples then. Uh, this one, last letter is an S, so you get true. Same here, and the other ones are false. They end in an E and a C. Pretty straightforward there. And even they noted down below, this is an oversimplification of the English language. They're ignoring many edge cases. So um, let's just focus on learning here, not worry so much about that. Though I will admit it's a contrived example. Over to code. This is your chance to pause and think about it, have a go. Now we've been working with arrays lately and we know that strings are like character arrays where each of the elements is a single character, W, then O, then R, then D. You know, it's a collection of these. So we can treat it that way and we can basically ignore everything up to that very last letter. Just pretend it's not even there. That's all we need to look at. And we even, in a previous challenge, implemented something like get last element of array where it just showed us the last character. And uh, it's probably intentional on this website's part. They're trying to lead you into seeing how you build these methods that build on each other to make um, more features, uh, bigger projects, they work together. So you can imagine if you had a utility like that, we don't need it, but we could have used it to solve this problem. Just get that last element and see if it's an S. We can do the same thing, and we'll do that now. Return word substring. Remember, we learned that one. And we have to give it an index, at least, and also the number of characters we want. But if you remember that trick we used last time, if you don't provide that second argument, it's just going to take everything after the, the index you provide. So to get the last letter, we want word.length. That's the last one, but we want to go minus one, right? Because we're doing zero based stuff. So that's going to get us just the last letter. That's certainly not a Boolean result. We can be a little more wordy about this too. At first, that's usually how we do it. We try and implement it in a clear way and then we can get more concise and pretty with it if we want to. So let's start with this char last letter equals that. And then we can simply return if last letter is equal. Remember those double equal signs. And S, single quotes, again, I'm going to keep harping on that for a while until people just know it. Single quotes denote a character, a char, and the double quotes are for string. So if our last letter is equal to S, that's going to be true. And that's pretty much all we need to do. I guess we'll run this through the check. OK, we got an error. Cannot complicit, implicitly convert string to char. Last letter. Oh, sure. Yeah, substring is going to return a string. So what I should have done is treated this like an array. Remember, we used our indexer. These square brackets let you index right into the array. So we can treat the word just like it's an array. Let's do it that way. Then this way, we know we're being returned a char. The way I did it, it using the substring method, that returns a string. We need a char character. So let's try that again. See if it likes me now. It's questionable. OK, cool. That was good. And then again, to be concise, you can omit creating this temporary vari variable. Helps with readability. You could just as well take this part and 
substitute it in like this. Get rid of the, get rid of the temporary variable. And I think this would be just as well. Yeah, same thing. But I did also want to mention something about the regular expressions that we did. They would be very useful here, and it's a reasonable attempt to solving a problem like this. So I'd like to, I'm going to refresh just to clear it, and let's do one with a regular expression as well. That's really what they're meant for, is this sort of, um, you know, matching patterns. They're very common for finding telephone numbers in the right format, email addresses, you know, consider an email where you have some text, then you need an at symbol, then some more text, and then a period, and then some more text, you know, and they're perfect for just quickly validating the input. So we'll do it here. If I remember right, we needed using system text. Should be good. Then we need a pattern that we want to search. In our pattern, in our case, all you want to do is see that S, the letter S return, is at the very end of the string. So um, inside these square brackets here, I'm putting the letter S, it's to match, and then I'm going to use this dollar symbol. And this is saying that the S needs to occur at the end of the word. The dollar sign denotes the end, and I think it's the caret symbol if you wanted to do the same thing with the front, like it started with an S, but I don't care what it starts with. I only care about the last letter. And so then we can return um, Rejects match, yeah. Yeah, this is just the same page from last time, so I'm going to copy that. Rejects match, and our pattern. Was it pattern first? Input then pattern. Input would be word, pattern. Now remember, we got uh, the match itself has this success attribute, so. We need to tap that to get the Boolean result. So don't forget that. Success, it's going to return a Boolean whether it's successful or not. So we got our word input. This is the pattern basically just saying, hey, anything that ends in S, we're, we're calling it good. And let's try it this way. Let's see if, make sure I didn't do anything stupid again. Come on. Yeah, there we go. So this is probably a more realistic thing you would see for someone trying to validate string input. And uh, yeah, it's pretty good. We got to use regular expressions again. Very handy. Um, as usual, if you have questions, comments, you have good solutions, type them below. And thanks for watching.